don't get swept up in the things these people say because it could be any kind of person that comes up into the assembly, into the community, into our houses, and all they want to do is wreak havoc. And this rebellion is against God. And when this, when this rebellion comes against God, it brings about falsehood. Hi everyone, it's Kendra Dublin. We are back for lesson three in our seven part series of Jude Wolves Among Us, confronting falsehoods in the body of Christ. And so I'm excited so far about the first two lessons. If you have not caught up with the first two lessons, go ahead and look at those before you come here to lesson three so that you have a better understanding of the introduction of Jude, Jude 1 verses 4, which is the first lesson, and then 5 through 10, which is the second lesson. And then today we're going to go through verse 11. And we're only going to go through verse 11 because we got a lot. <laughs> In this one verse, there is plenty to go over. Woe to them. They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's era. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. And so I say we're going to go through a lot because there's a lot in these particular stories. And we want to be able to parse out what Judah is even talking about when he says, woe to them in the particular verse. And so the, one of the times that we see woe to them is Jesus saying this in Matthew 11, 20 through 24. But having that woe to them type of phrase is talking about uh, grief of someone or de denouncing something, someone and doing it publicly, condemning publicly. So obviously there's a time to condemn publicly what Judas doing in his letter. And also when Jesus does it in Matthew 11, 20 through 24. And this is what he says. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles that are performed in you have been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in Seth, Cloth, and Ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Tyre, for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted into heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were performed in you would have been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than you. And so the same language that Jesus uses <laughs> to tell them that they're going to hell, like he literally condemned them. Not because he didn't, he came to save the world, but he said, you didn't want me. You wanted my miracle. And so let me just tell you where you're going to go based off of how you are. And that's the word. And so Jude is using the same language for the modern false teachers and prophets that him and his people are dealing with that the messianic jews are dealing with and so the first example um, that he gives is they have taken the way of cain so let's look at the story of cain so in genesis 4 2 through 8 we see the story of cain start to unfold so we're all going to go to genesis 4 2 through 8 and of course anytime you need to pause this to make sure you're on track or if you want to do the study guide while you're doing it then you can pause it anytime you need to so in genesis 4 i'll just start with verse 1 adam made love to his wife eve and became pregnant and gave birth to cain she said with the help of the lord i have brought forth a man later she gave birth to his brother abel now abel kept flocks and cain worked the soil in the course of time cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the lord and abel also brought an offering fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock the lord looked with favor on abel and his offering but on cain and his offering he did not look with favor so cain was very angry and his face was downcast then the lord said to cain why are you angry why is your face downcast if you do what is right will you not be accepted but if you do not do what is right sin is crouching at your door it desires to have you but you must rule over it now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and got rid of him. And I got to say got rid of him because of how the algorithm says. But we see the rebellion of Cain. Cain and Abel made offerings to the Lord. The Lord didn't look favorably on Cain's um, offering. Cain was angry and downcast. The Lord asked him why. The Lord tried to warn him, but he didn't take heed. 
and he got rid of his brother. His heart was not right with God. Abel had faith in God. Cain did not. He had an issue with God and it took out his own brother. He even says, am I my own brother's keeper? When we continue to read the interaction that God has with him, but he is ungodly. He had no regard for God. So he had no regard for Abel, for his brother. And it wasn't just the fact that it was a, God looked unfavorably at his particular offering. It was what was in Cain's heart. Hebrews 11, four says by faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did by faith. He was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering and by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is not alive. It wasn't about the offering itself. It was the fact that Cain's heart was wrong and he did not do it in faith. He just did it as if it was a work. I, I don't believe in you, but here's what I got. And God is, I don't, I don't want that from you. You who have no faith in me, you who, do, who does not even call me my, your God. It was Cain's heart. That was the problem. And it was Cain's heart that destroyed him. Then we see it in first John three twelve. for this is the message that you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. It wasn't about the offering itself. It says he belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. His issue is always with God, but because he did what he was supposed to do, Abel was doing what he was supposed to do and doing it righteously. He got rid of him. And why did he do that? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Don't take the way of Cain. But that's what these false teachers and prophets and stuff are doing. They are taking the way of Cain, trying to give to God and God, I don't, I don't want that. Cain thought be, because he gave to God that he was good. Oh, I'm going to be good with God. No, he had an art, heart issue. He was not of God. He had a righteousness issue. He was not of God. And he didn't want to walk with the Lord. He tried to give as if he was in right standing with the Lord. And then we have a second example. And this one has multiple chapters. So this is taken in numbers 22 through 25 chapters 31. Really it's all of those, those chapters in there, but 22 through 25 and 31. But it also says in verse 11, they have rushed for profit into Balaam's era these false teachers of Jews day. And because I can't go through all five chapters right now, <laughs> Israel was traveling through uh, Moab and the people are terrified and afraid because of what they did to the Amorites. Of course, when things happen and people are in different battles that they hear about who, what, when, where, and how things happen. And so the Moabite people tell the elders and the elders tell Balak their king. And he summons Balaam to curse Israel. And then he gives Balaam his fee for divination. He worked witchcraft for the nations, for different people, but he gives him a fee, he gives him money for his witchcraft, for his false prophecy. And so Balaam is about to do his divination and God himself shows up <laughs> and tells him not to go with them nor curse them because they are blessed. And then he tells the Moabites this and Balak, and he says, look, I'll just give you more. He, he's, I don't care what the Lord told you. I, I, I'll just give you more money. <laughs> Here's more to your fee. I'll give you more money. Do what you got to do. But Balaam says, I can only do what God says. Even he saw who was the one true king. And God goes to him and says, go with them, but only do what I say. And then he has this encounter with the angel and the donkey that he's on as he's trying to go to where Balak is so he can uh, curse the people for Balak. Although he's already said, God can only allow me to curse them. While he's on that journey, the donkey sees the angel, the, angel, the donkey's trying to get out the way. And the angel is like, Hey, <laughs> tells him again. He initially said, I don't want you going with them, period. 
you tell them again, hey, remember what I said to you. When you go there, you only can bless them. You can't curse them. And so Balak does his sacrifice and does his stuff to his gods and the high places, but Balaam could only bless them. He did all of his divination at the end of the day. God said, yeah, I'm, all that divination you just did. Yeah, that's null and void right now. My word stands. <laughs> yes, Lord. My word stands. So God wouldn't let him curse Israel. He tried many times. But he would not allow him to curse Israel. And he usually used divination and took his fee and took his rewards. So why is Jude talking about Balaam's error? Because so far all he's done, at least when it comes to God's people, is bless them. Do the word of the Lord. He blessed them. Even when he tried to do divination, he, God said, nope, psh, I'm cutting that off. You're going to bless my people. There was even a time where he didn't even get to the divination. God just spoke to him. And so in chapter 25, Balaam gets around this. We see that in Numbers 25. He gets around the cursing. And so in order for him to get around it, Balaam gave the advice to the Midianite women to entice the Israelites. So the Midianites, the Moabites, you know how you can be allies with different people. That's how they were. And so Balaam gave advice to Midian women to entice the Israelites to be unfaithful to the Lord in the pure incident. By having sex with them, then following their gods. Y'all see how this happened. They have sex with them, then follow their gods. And the Moabites did this. And the Moabites were again allies with the Midianites. And God tells Moses to kill the Moabite leaders for them doing this, for listening to Balaam's advice because he couldn't curse them. He listened to their advice. And Israel's people who yoked themselves up with their gods, who had sex with the women, and they started living in idolatry, she got rid of them. And right after this incident, one of the Israelite men brought a Midianite woman. But when one of the leaders, Phinehas, one of the Levites, got rid of him, and God's anger stopped, although when that woman came into the camp with that Israelite man, a plague in the camp started. But when he got rid, when Phinehas got rid of him and her, that's when the plague lifted off. It came when the rebellion came into the camp. And then in chapter 31, God tells Moses to take vengeance on the Midianites. Because they have done this, I need you to take vengeance on them. And so they were supposed to get rid of all of them, but they didn't. They, they took the women and the children. But in verse 15 through 17, the Lord says, you have allowed all the women to live. They were once who followed Balaam's advice and enticed the Israelites to be unfaithful to the Lord in the P.O.R. incident so that a plague struck the Lord's people. Now get rid of all the boys and get rid of all the women who slept with the man. And guess who was in that war that, got, that they got rid of as well? Balaam. So not only are these false leaders like Cain, but they are like Balaam and are enticed by money. They are enticed by profit. Because even when Balaam couldn't do what he wanted to do, he wanted to keep his funds. He wanted to keep his divination fee and led the people into sex and morality and idolatry. These are the way of these leaders. And they don't have to do it in the way like Balaam, where people knew him for this thing, you could be in a small congregation and you see these same characteristics and these same sins. And so then he says, these people have also been like Korah in the rebellion. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. And so in number 16, we see that Korah, said to the assembly and Moses with 250 Levites, because they were Levites, they were leaders. We are holy. Why do you set yourself up? And so in verse four through five, it says, in the morning, the Lord will show you, this is Moses speaking, who belongs to him and who is holy. And he will have that person come near him. The man he chooses, he will cause to come near him. When Moses heard this, he fell face down. 
take his censer and put the coals in the, in, in the incense, present it to the Lord. God said, separate yourselves. Because after the, Moses said these things, they got the directions that they needed from the Lord. God said, separate yourselves from these people. Go ahead and do the incense, the coals, and all of that. We're going to see who the Lord says is the leader of the Israelites, who's going to lead the Israelites. And so he also said, say to the assembly, move away from these people. Move away from the family, from Korah's family and all of that. And so Moses said, if they die naturally, then they are right. I'm the one who's wrong. But if the Lord opens up and kills them, opens up the earth, <laughs> then they have treated the Lord with contempt. Mm. Not Moses. They've treated the Lord with contempt. And then, of course, we all know Korah's family dies. The family dies. Not just Korah himself. The family dies. And the 250 that rebelled. And then when the assembly spoke up against Moses and Aaron because of this, God sent a plague on them. It's like, this is how you know people are not believing because they're seeing God's hand at work and they still won't comply. And Moses and Aaron made atonement for them. Although they were in rebellion, they knew he wanted about me. They cared about the people enough. This is a good shepherd. This is the parallel of how Moses acted. He went and told Aaron, make atonement for them <laughs> as a Levite. He could do that in any given moment. They were rebelling against God. And Moses being a good shepherd was showing them what it looks like to be godly. To be righteous. Even when they were sinning against God, even when their thoughts and their accusations were, were against them, he was always trying to atone for their sins. But those that Judah's talking about are doing the exact opposite, trying to raise themselves up. Korah had the nerve to say, we are holy. Why do you set yourself up? You are, you were made holy because God made you holy. <laughs> God said you leave ice apart in that way. You didn't do it on your own accord. And then gets puffed up in, in pride and obviously lacks belief. Rebellion. So we have Cain who was ungodly. Balaam, a Gentile who was ungodly. Korah, a priest who was ungodly. Jew just keeps giving us these examples of all these different people who are ungodly. We see that God does not show favoritism at all because we see the angels. We see God's people, quote unquote. We see the Gentiles. We see all these different examples in every single example that Jude gives. Jude keeps showing us all types of people to drive the point home. Don't get swept up in the things these people say because it could be any kind of person that comes up into the assembly, into the community, into our houses. And all they want to do is wreak havoc. And this rebellion is against God. And when this, when this rebellion comes against God, it brings about falsehood. It brings about different teachings. It brings about just like Balaam tried to do with the Israelites. It brings about, okay, what's well, up? You have a license to sin. Well, then you can be sexually immoral and do your own thing, which led to idolatry for them. They already knew what it was. They knew in order for them to start to run after a different God, we got to get them to be immoral in this way so that they can continue on and leave this God. That's what these people are doing. That's what they have set themselves up to do. Rebellion against God brings falsehood and it brings idolatry. And we see that these things are happening in Jews day. Which means they are festering even now. And because these people are unrighteous. We continue to see why the Holy Spirit prompts Jude to write this. <laughs> this is a lineage of people who do not believe in God. This is, this is the way of these people. In a similar way, this person does this thing. But it's all rebellion. It's all being out of order. 
And the Holy Spirit says, we're not talking about no common salvation right now. We're talking about the falsehoods in here. We're talking about the false leaders up in here. We're talking about the people who are not of me, but claim to be of me. So I'm hoping that this, these three examples, more examples, starts to help us to get a better idea, even more better idea of who God does not want us to, in a sense, yoke ourselves up to. Because they are, in fact, unbelievers. Watch them. They're going to make up their different arguments and how they should do things. Cor had 250, 250 people that he coaxed into going against God. And none of us wants to be that 250. <laughs> and we don't have to be if we see, okay, I've seen the pattern in Korah. I've seen the pattern in the angels that rebelled. I see the pattern in Cain. I see the pattern in Balaam. I will not be like that. And when you are a child of God, he helps you to endure to the end. Even when you hear some things and, and, and it starts to sound, is that right? The Holy Spirit will say, mm-mm, mm-mm. He's going to help us. He's going to help us the same way he helped you write a different chapter than he thought he was going to write. So again, I pray this has been helpful for you all. I pray that if you're seeing these things that you come from out of it, but I'm also praying that you just simply read the stories, read the different scriptures so that you have a better idea of what it looks like to see the wolves among us and contend for the faith at this point. But you got more chapters that we're going to go, well, not chapters, but verses we're going to go through before we get to some of the modern applications and what that looks like for us today. But again, go ahead and do your work. Take that 15 minutes or so to do the answers and then take some time later to do the study itself so that you can walk through the different stories so that you have a, a better idea and that you can teach somebody else. Go ahead and do your studies tonight, today, whatever day this is for you, <laughs> because tomorrow is too late to be great.